Hey everyone, welcome back! Today, we're gonna be looking at the Ruvox, the newest of two Incarnons added in the Dante Unbound updates. It's a bit of an oddball, however, you can do things like this. Enemy spawn density permitting. Granted, I tested this exact kind of build and mission, and there were a few caveats. But let's see what Ruvox is really capable of doing. Ruvox is a fist class weapon, which are known for their amazing stance, Seismic Palm, which has very high multipliers and good hitboxes. Fists also have a follow through stat of 0.9, meaning 90% of the previous damage hit is transferred to the next enemy hit in a swing. The thing is, none of these matter for Ruvox. It is worse than most fists at light attacks because the Incarnon perks and gimmicks of this weapon are heavily geared towards slams only. It also cannot slash. You can make it work with melee influence, but there are also much better fists that could easily pass Ruvox's light attack potential. In other words, Heavy Slam Ruvox without melee influence is only slightly better than a generic good melee with melee influence spamming ordinary light attacks. The real shot of this weapon is Heavy Slams in Incarnon mode. Doing so triggers enemies being raised on spines, pinning them in place similar to Neja's Divine Spears. These spears will uniquely reapply any status the slam originally inflicted on the enemy once per second. This is extremely important and the reason why the heavy slam is actually viable. Spears last 1 seconds longer per combo multiplier when executing the heavy slam. This can massively amplify status damage when a dot is inflicted, making status chance and dots significantly more important on Ruvox than crits. However, it is possible to fit both crits and status due to Incarnon perks. The Heavy Slam feels very undertuned on the surface and is dependent on melee influence to be comfortable for use on Steel Path. In a vacuum without frame synergies, no roar, no armor strip, it takes a 12 times Heavy Slam Ruvox on an optimal build 3 to 5 seconds to kill off enemies tagged by the spears in Simulacrum. Granted, this is a little bit tankier than normal, but also, luckily, they are crowd controlled. However, sometimes some even live. Without melee influence, the Heavy Slam setup scales up to roughly level 300 in a vacuum, but requires almost the full daunt duration to tick at that point. With melee influence, the Heavy Slam build can scale up to around level 1000 even without armor strip. While influence is not required for the weapon to function, the synergy it provides is nearly impossible to ignore and fixes many issues with the weapon itself. Why is influence so important? The weapon's optimal DPS comes from heavy slams, which are radial attacks from the update that now scale off also base damage mods, elements, crits, and more. Because you want to prioritize dots on the setup, you want to inflict status effects in a very wide area. The Ruvox even has an Incarnon perk that increases slam radius hitbox, a stat that is normally unattainable through mods. By combining melee influence with the heavy slam hitbox, you gain quadratic scaling by causing any enemy struck by status effect in the AoE to reflect on everybody else. This is extremely important for our main statuses, electric, due to cross-chaining DPS scaling cubically with influence, and corrosive, where reaching 14 reflective corrosive stacks can full strip the entire crowd at once, despite using only one slam attack. There are also drawbacks to be aware of. Ruvox has very low damage by default for a melee. Because all stats are derived from the weapon's original innate damage value, this means everything is weaker than normal, including our heavy slams. While it does not ruin the weapon, do not be surprised if Ruvox deals less damage than you expect. You will not get pretty numbers, but it will be enough to kill. Ruvox revolving its damage around slams also means that it can be very clunky to use. If you don't use the slams, you might as well not use the weapon. Finally, you cannot use the heavy slams as a raw damage setup. The spear mechanic reapplying statuses is where most of its nuke potential and scaling comes from. Let's take a look at those Incarnon perks. Aren't you happy we don't have to go to Cavalero to change these anymore? The first perk tree is always the Incarnon Evolution. Using any kind of heavy at 6x combo or higher, which is 100+, plus, transforms it into its Incarnon mode, gaining 3 meters range, minus 35% attack speed. Yes, it loses attack speed. But don't worry, we can easily negate this, and converts impact damage into puncture. Now, that third perk is mostly forgettable, and its only purpose is to stack 5 puncture procs for flat 25% crit chance. Also, because slams only hit once, you're not gonna proc 5 puncture procs. Then Karnon mode does not change the moveset or class of the weapon, and it still works like a normal fist. 
Evolution 2 is pretty simple. The plus 1 range is pointless, because then Karnon mode already grants plus 3 meters. If you really want more range, Primed Reach is significantly better. But because this weapon revolves around heavy slams, which don't care about range, this perk is wasted. If you for some reason want to use this weapon as light attack spam, pick Lethal Impetus. This grants up to 45% attack speed after 3 kills, which will negate the 35% attack speed penalty from the Incarnon mode. Anyways, attack speed for slams though isn't as important because it only affects the end animation after you slam, and you only need one slam to kill a group. Arcane Strike also easily covers the attack penalty if needed. Gathering Momentum grants up to a maximum 55% general movement speed. Yes, general movement speed. You go stupid fast, and this is really good for parkour but also just for finding the next crowd to dunk on. Evolution 3 is also simple. Adept Reflexes grants plus 15 initial combo. You don't need this. Fists have a good hitbox and it isn't hard to hit enemies. You can even slam which has a fixed radius that ignores weapon arch types. Seismic Slam is strongly recommended for heavy slam builds because the more enemies you hit, the more you can kill. But more importantly, the more enemies will get tanked by status to reflect back into the crowd via melee influence. Shockwave Synergy should never be used for slam DPS because its only purpose is to build combo and does not help DPS in any manner. For light attacks, it's good, letting slams grant 5 combo per hit instead of 10. But again, there are much, much better melees for light attack than Ruvox. If this perk was on Evolution 4 instead, it would be amazing pick for combo sustain, slamming to build 5 combo per enemy to easily get back to 12 times combo, which is basically what Prados can do. Evolution Forward does not have that many useful choices. Swift Transmute is your typical early transform. Middle perk grants plus one air jump. It does not allow you to get plus one bullet jump. Not useful. This isn't Inadem. Ruvox wants to be on the ground. Inspiring Execution is useless because a good heavy slam build should kill crowds in one single attack. Spirit enemies can be ground finishered, but that just means you failed to kill them. Plus, it only grants combo count chance. Ruvox should be on either a 90% heavy efficiency and or Tenokai's setup. Evolution 5 is where things get interesting. The only perk you should be using for heavy slam is Vulnerability Serum. Status Vulnerability works like this. Enemies will take 35% more status procs, but each of these procs will also deal 35% more status damage. Therefore, this value is squared for effective DPS, meaning this perk grants you 82% more total damage. This stat is separate from almost all other stats in the game, so you don't need to worry about it diminishing returns. Brutal Efficiency grants plus 40% efficiency for 20 seconds if you slam at least 5 enemies in a single hit. This isn't needed because 1. Tenokai is recommended since you may not always encounter 5 plus enemies at once, and 2. This only saves one mod slot by letting you skip Reflex Coil. The deciding factor on Ruvox is going either Crit, which requires Blood Rush and Organ Shatter, or Viral to supplement the Electric Procs, which also takes two mod slots. Therefore, because Brutal Efficiency only saves one mod slot, it does not allow you to run both Viral and Crit alongside Electric. Permanent Perforation sucks because 5 Puncture Procs is just flat 25% crit chance. Let's look at the two main builds, each with their variants for more specific loadouts. The first setup is for light attack spam. I would not recommend it works, but is literally the worst recent fist weapon related for this purpose. Fear X Wraith and Karnon and Tekel Prime are significantly better at this, both at either raw damage or being able to slash. And Karnon perks for light attacks do not matter on trees 4 and 5. On tree 2, pick lethal impetus for 45% attack speed and negate then Karnon mode attack speed penalty. On tree 3, pick Shockwave Synergy for extremely easy combo building from slams. It's a stock melee influence setup, because the Ruvox cannot slash under any circumstances outside of Varuna. Therefore, you are reliant on raw damage or dot setups. Because melee influence exists, it is strictly superior to a raw damage Ruvox, since Ruvox has such low damage. This setup is a generic solo influence build that does not rely on particular frame setups, helmets, or primers. You get cookie cutter viral electric using melee influence to skip the need for range. Alternatively, you can drop the crit mods for prime reach and attack speed if that's more your taste. Either way, smite is mandatory because it triple dips on melee influence status spread for 3.72 times more damage. Viral is kept at rank 0 so it doesn't dilute your electric procs, and weeping wound pushes this Ruvox to 114% which guarantees at least one status per swing. All you gotta do is mash auto melee. Arcane Strike is recommended, but not mandatory. 
Now, if you're willing to use a primer, which would be a significant improvement, then drop the viral mods for Prime Breach and Berserker. Fury. This will let you hit more enemies per swing to funnel into melee influence, as well as much, much faster attack speed from upkeeping kills. Build 2 and its variant is all focused around heavy slam setups. Tree 2 wants gathering momentum, since slam attacks are not significantly affected by attack speed, except the post slam animation, which can be cancelled by mode hotkey tech if desired. Otherwise, having big movement speed buff to get to the next group is much more important. Tree 3 runs Seismic Slam, because bigger slam radius equals more enemies tanked, equals better melee influence procs, equals better killing. Tree 4 can run Incarnon Transformation, because none of the other perks really matter. Tree 5 wants Vulnerability Serum, because as mentioned, Brutal Efficiency only saves one mod slot when we need to save two to significantly improve Ruvox builds, and we also already have access to Tenokai. I would recommend using Prime Pressure Point over Seismic Slam. It's only a 35% base damage difference, which will get diluted by a lot of other damage sources I will explain later. This allows your base damage mod to also apply to normal melee attacks if needed. After playing with this weapon for several hours, I feel that spamming slams nonstop is actually not practical. Slam spam kills well enough that building combo backup is problematic since most things are actually dead. We opted for a Tenokai setup for free heavy slams while also rebuilding combo when not slamming from a Tenokai proc. You can either use Dreamer's Wrath or Discipline's Merit today. It doesn't really make much of a difference. Slams can now proc natural status weight, so weeping wounds and double slotting electric is super important for activating melee influence consistently, scaling up our damage, and also maximizing odds of the impaling spears self reprocking electric. The initial big slam is our main source of damage. Blood Rush scales into Organ Shatter, passing 100% crit for guaranteed crit damage, and Smite as always, blah blah blah, triple dipping for 3.72 times on status. Focus Energy is backup heavy efficiency if you slam without Tenokai. We're also equipping two Nira mods on our Warframe. Rank does not matter, just slot them for 200% base damage on slams. One is even an Exilus. Arcane Fury and Strike are solid options too that I'd actually recommend both to make building combo easier and provide a juicy plus 180% base damage. The final result? You go around finding groups of enemies and heavy slam. Influence does most of the lifting. If you don't have influence proc, you can spam a couple light attacks at the spear targets to proc it. Whenever you find a new group, you punch them a bit to rebuild combo. This should also trigger Tenokai, which now works with heavy slams to maintain all combo. Now, there is one special variant with Lavos. I recently covered Valence Formation, a new augment that allows Lavos to infuse any kind of element in the game on your weapons as a weapon platform. It also grants force procs of said element to anything that isn't a true AoE, with very few exceptions. This includes melee setups for melee influence, and you have two choices. Either infuse Electric and Mod Corrosive, guaranteeing you have maximal odds of activating influence from the slam procs, as well as skyrocketing your electric dot scaling. I would recommend this for Bastial Path and easily up to, say, 2 hour survival. Level like 1000, 2000, it would probably still be fine. Or instead, you can infuse Corrosive to guarantee you spread a ton of Corrosive procs in hopes of reaching 14 stacks via melee influence to full strip for level 9k scaling. There is one caveat though, because Ruvox is a single hit slam weapon and the spears cannot reflect procs back on later ticks, only the initial slam, you have to hit 13 enemies at once for a single slam with force proc corrosive to full strip the entire crowd. 13 enemies is a lot, even on steel path, even with plus 60% slam radius, and frequently will require a second slam to hit 14 stacks for full strip with two emerald shards. Now, this is the way to scale Ruvox all the way up to 9k without resorting to active armor strip spam. You'd remove the crit mods on Ruvox, Blood Rush, and Organ Shatter. Run even more electric to counter Valence Formation's fixed 200% elemental buff screwing your status waiting, in this case, Corrosive. The other slot is free. At base steel path, feel free to slot healing return for better tanking. But in endurance, I'd recommend replacing with dispatch overdrive to stack with the 55% move speed in Karnon perk. The sample Lavos build would look like this. Because Valence Formation is fixed at 200% buff and force procs, strength actually isn't important. Just have high duration so that the buff is comfortable and some range if you want. For base steel path, it's unnecessary and you can slot whatever you want in the last space. For Endurance, I would recommend more range with a survivability helmet like Muzzle Flash or Resonator. 
Fury and Strike are recommended, because let's be real, you're only bringing Ruvox if you intend to use it as main DPS. The technical demand of Heavy Slam gameplay is too much to weave extensive gunplay into as well. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I try my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like we're doing with Dante's Unbound update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't miss out on any of that, do you? And that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.